How are you guys? Hope you're all well. First, let's see what comes in the box. Of course, you'll get the mouse itself, packaged beautifully. Wireless receiver, nice braided cable, a USB cable adapter, and the usual quick start guides and warranty cards. Let's take a closer look at the included accessories first. These three kind of works in tandem with one another. The cable is 180cm long but is braided and stiff, and as you can see, it will move your mouse compared to paracords. Although using this directly as a data cable to the mouse would be a rare event and you'll only be using this majority of the time as a charging cable. It's sad to see micro USB here though instead of USB-C, especially in 2019. At the end of the cable, you can connect the included cable adapter. You can use this to relocate your USB port from your PC to any part of your desk, so that when you connect the wireless receiver to it, it's nearer to your mouse. Speaking of the receiver, it's small and compact. You can just chuck it directly on any free USB port of your PC and forget about it. There's no room for it though on the mouse body, so make sure not to lose it when traveling. Small detail on both the cable and receiver that is surely appreciated is the texture at the ends, making them easier to remove. All of the accessories feels quality and will definitely last a long time. Moving on to the mouse itself, constructed on mainly plastic, it still feels solid. Designed mainly for right-handed palm grip users, this is one big and heavy mouse, weighing in in about 130 grams, with length of 100 millimeters, height of 45 millimeters, width of about 65 millimeters on the grip area, and width of 80 millimeters at the back. You can smack someone with this when you're ranging. The rubberized mouse wheel got 24 steps to it, and the mouse comes with 10 programmable buttons. The top shell is matte black got a smooth texture on it and have a nice curvature and shape which is comfortable on the hand. It is also nice to find comfort curves on both the left and right clicks. I'm happy to report as well that all buttons are easy to reach. You can also find here your profile up and down buttons to cycle between your profiles. My hands by the way measures 18cm in length and 9cm in width. Right side is well shaped as well and have a grippy texture where my fingers falls perfectly. You can also find this texture on the left side. There's a nice groove here where your thumb rests, and directly above it are your forward and back buttons. Above these buttons, in a kind of awkward position, you can find your option button. And at the front, you can find your DPI up and down buttons. Here, you can also find your multipurpose LED indicator. At the bottom, you'll find four rubber feet, PMW3391 optical sensor and the switch for slipstream or Bluetooth wireless connectivity, as well as turning the mouse off. As you notice too, the front part of the mouse is made out of metal, which should improve the overall quality of the mouse. Using the Iron Claw RGB wireless as my daily driver, I can say that the PMW3391 sensor is precise and accurate. The sensor is capable of 100 to 18,000 dpi, with one dpi step interval. You can also select 4 different falling rates at 125, 250, 500, and 1000 Hz, with all of them performing as intended. Both left and right buttons features nice and tactile Omron switches with rated durability of 50 million clicks. One major feature of this mouse is its wireless connectivity. Boasting both Bluetooth and Slipstream technology of Corsair, this is one flexible mouse. I mainly connect this mouse using the Slipstream technology, which in theory should deliver hyper-fast 2.4GHz gaming grade wireless speed. Although I can test that claim, I didn't notice any difference between the wired or wireless connection. There is no noticeable lag or latency and the connection is solid. It's also nice to have Bluetooth connectivity if you intend to use this mouse with more than one device. Switching between devices is as easy as selecting the connection at the bottom of the mouse. Battery life is great too. Using the Slipstream technology, Corsair advertises that it should last for about 16 hours with standard lighting or 24 hours with lighting off. Using Bluetooth, the mouse should last for about 30 hours with standard lighting and 50 hours with lights off. This is hard to test though as Corsair IQ don't show you your exact battery life and only reports in high, medium, or low levels only. With my use, it takes me around 3 days of normal use with battery saving settings before I need to recharge. And I just plug it at night so when I use it the next day, it's all good. Speaking of lighting, this mouse got 3 zones. 
at the top box which is the Corsair logo, the mouse wheel, and the front of the mouse. You can customize it using Corsair's IQ. You can also change the colors of the multipurpose LED indicators to correspond to what profile or DPI you're in. To take full advantage of the features of the mouse, you need to install Corsair's IQ. Here, you will be greeted with what Corsair products you have. Selecting the mouse directs you to its customization. Here, you can add and personalize profiles. When adding, you can also select whether you want it to be software or hardware profile. A software profile allows full customization as long as IQ is active. But you cannot save this to the mouse itself. You can also link this profile to a program. While a hardware profile can be saved directly onto the mouse itself. However, due to the mouse limited resources, actions and lighting effects will be more limited. You can attach custom profile icons and background image on your profiles too for further customizations. Inside the profiles, you can save your actions, lighting effects, DPI, as well as performance and surface calibration tuning. Under actions, you can rebind all your 10 mouse buttons. Here, you can select between macros, text, media controls, launch an application, timer, profile switching, or to disable the buttons completely. You can also remap the buttons to virtually any keyboard keys you want, including the nav cluster, modifiers, lock keys, and numpad, or to change your input to a different language entirely. My advice here though is to put all your actions first before assigning it to a button to reduce confusion, as IQ is a powerful software but some reports it as difficult to use. Moving on to lighting effects, here you can find 3 zones you can customize. You can select them entirely to sync them or change them one by one. Predefined lighting options are static and solid colors and a gradient. You can change the opacity here as well. If you have other Corsair products, you can sync them here. I don't have any Corsair products right now but you can change them to Spiral Rainbow, Rainbow Wave, Rainbow, Color Shift, Pulse, Wave, Visor, Rain, Type or Reactive Lighting, as well as monitor your system's temperature. What's missing here though is the option that tells you your current battery status so you can tell if you need to recharge. You can change your DPI settings under the DPI tab. Here you can change your DPI from 100 to 18,000 DPI in increments of 1 so you can fine tune it to your liking. There are 3 defaults here plus 1 sniper. You can also change their Y axis DPI. You can also change your indication color here to easily know which DPI you're currently on. Under Performance, you can find the Angle Snapping and the Enhanced Pointer Precision options. I'm not entirely sure what's the point of the pointer speed though, as you can set the DPI in the previous tab. It's also weird to find the Profile Indicator color here. And lastly, the Surface Calibration where you calibrate your mouse to your mousepad or any surface of choice. You need to connect the USB cable though to use this feature. Under the Settings menu of the IQ is where you'll find additional information of your mouse. Here you can find the connection and battery status, changing of polling rate, brightness, which I find to be weird too as you can only select it to be maximum or minimum. There's no options in between. You can enable the sleep mode here as well and the time before it kicks in. Enabling power saving mode here will turn off all the lighting of your mouse itself. I highly suggest to enable battery gauge in system taskbar to easily see your battery status without having to go to IQ. Here is where you'll update the firmware for both the mouse and dongle too. Now for the sound test. Overall, this is one great mouse. Having this many buttons is not only useful in games but in productivity too. Comfort for long usage is great as well, especially for those who prefer the palm grip. You also have the Omron switches and Pixar PMW3391 for that solid performance, as well as the flexibility of having the slipstream and Bluetooth connectivity. It's also competitively priced at 80 US dollars or around 300 AED here in the UAE 
or around 4,000 Philippine pesos for my fellow kabayan. If you are in the market for large, wireless mouse with a ton of buttons, this is definitely worth taking a look at. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed. If you like this review, consider subscribing. Hit that like button and notification bell as well before you go, or comment your opinions down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.